Hey! Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jade Monkey. We're back here in Rust, talking about the Rust console edition for the uh, PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, uh, next generations, and everything in between. And yes, you are seeing that correctly. That is a large furnace burning inside, completely inside of a base with all stone all the way around. No tricks, no gimmicks. This is a thing. We're going to show you how to make the Jade Furnace Base. Uh, stay tuned. Let's do this thing. Okay, let's jump over here real quick. Let me turn on the actual item inventory here. Again, Jade Monkey, we are on Devastation Unleashed as of November 2021. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, we already have a Furnace Base, and that works pretty good. And I do have a link to that. I will link it now in the upper right-hand corner. If you're interested in that. And it does work with floor grills. But how many times have you been out there? You've got a compound. You don't have a compound. You've been placing valuable sulfur inside. And it, even if you have the walls, people, grubs come by and take your stuff and jump back over the walls. So you build things like this. And this is great, but it does require a floor grill blueprint. And it's only as tough. Each one of these floor grills is required to run the furnace. But each one of those little guys, boom. It's the same as a sheet metal door. Four satchels and you're in. You can layer these, but it's gonna add to the cost and it just keeps going more and more vertical as the footprint is quite large here. Now, this is a bit larger than the one we have as a sample, but still. So we're gonna show you how to build the Jade Furnace Base and it does work on the Rust Console Edition. Did try this on Builder's Paradise. Fingers crossed that that comes soon for the live branch. I know that was delayed, but anyways, here we go. I'm gonna show you the footprint real quick while I take a swig of the old tactical cylinder. I'm gonna use my admin powers and show you the floor plan. This is the tool cupboard here. I'm gonna try to look in the same direction each time I do it. I'm gonna have my character stand right here and then I'm gonna pull the camera back. So there's a lot of benefits to this. Low profile, low cost, low upkeep is a thing. I don't see enough people on PC or really on Rust Console Edition use satellite bases or even furnace bases themselves. Like, okay, so what do I mean by a satellite base? You can go, let's say your base is on the shoreline somewhere, right? And it's good, but like you really need a lot of, I don't know, metal, sulfur, whatever. So you have to go to the mountains to do it. So when you do that, it's risky to go to the mountains and then come back. So why not place a base there to process the materials and then bring those home? What makes it even more powerful is having it on a shoreline like this. Let me go ahead and just show you a quick sample, then we'll get into the build itself. Let's say uh, you've got some harvesting here. You take it to your furnace base up here, and then when you process it, let's say your base is down in AAA 6, then you could take a boat and then travel down and then come up to your base here and then transfer the materials that are already processed. And then when you need to, you just force respawn yourself back into your furnace base slash satellite base slash harvesting base, farm bot, and then go repeat the process. And it's great for high population, you name it. It doesn't matter if you're on Xbox, PlayStation, it's always the same thing and it's fantastic. So let me show this floor plan. And the, here's the other thing. This can be completely enclosed because of the new building blocks that we have for Devastation Unleashed. They're called procedural roof tiles, or just procedural tiles. We have them on the corners here. You can see them. This little end cap piece. But all right, we're going to show you how to do this. All right, starting off, I'm going to fly over here real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, before we do that, um, if you are new to this, like building in general, that's perfectly fine. I've got a builder's guide for you. You really do need to see that if you're unfamiliar with uh, what cementing time is, soft side, hard side, which is totally fine. I have a, a builder's guide. For uh, beginners, intermediates, I will link that now in the upper right-hand corner. And if you don't see that, I'll have them as pinned comments down below because YouTube app is being a little goofy. So you can, uh, before we do the floor plan, sorry, you can beef these out even further. You can add an extra airlock with turret protection. Uh, yeah, so if you've got another base close by, like literally next door, and you don't have a compound, you literally can walk from your base, I'm sorry, the furnace base, to your base and have the turret protect you. It's really nice. Or have this inside the compound. No one's going to steal it. They literally have to raid you to get inside. Here's a beefed out version right here. Doot, 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 doot. All metal. And let's be honest, if you're farming metal and smelting metal, this is totally doable. And the upkeep, not so bad. Here, I'll show you real quick. Doot, 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 doot. Look at that. 1,129 and 573 stone. What? That's dirt cheap. Solos, duos, trios. Come get it. Okay, let's do the build. Let's do the build. All right, starting off, you really only need three doors. Uh, let's put it here. I am going to use wooden locks, by the way. 
Um, just easier for me to place down. I'm going to try to be quick about this. Okay, so really you need a flat surface as best as you possibly can. The edge of the water is nice. Start with a square tile. Kind of walk around with a twig. Make sure you've got good clearance. You kind of want this low but not too high, if that makes sense. So this is where your furnace is going to be, and you're going to knock out these four tiles. I'm going to put the furnace piece over here. Oopsie poopsie. Did I get that? No, I didn't. And there we go. So now what you want to do with your building plans, go to the triangle, place three triangles on the end piece. See right there? Same here. Same here. And same for the last section. Now, uh, pulling back to my player's right is going to be where the TC is, which is going to be one of the main entrances here. And then uh, to the player's left, this is going to be another main entrance. And an extra third entrance here on this corner. Um, if you don't use it, that's fine. Again, this is made to be modified. Make the tweaks as you go. But first of all, try to build one of these as is so you know how this mechanic works. Because there is some build order to this. Now, go right to your hammer and make these into stone. Just the triangles, not the squares. Try to be quick about this. Oopsie. See what I mean? It's just a bit faster for me to do these, and I, I don't like these to be terribly long. Okay, so to my right is going to be the tool cupboard and uh, one of the main entrances. To the right, uh, lighthouse side, and then to my left, right? So I'm going to go ahead and place a door here and place a door here. So again, backing up, you can see those two doors. Now, to my player's left leg bottom, we're going to place a door here. Again, you can make that a wall if you want to, but it'll, it'll make more sense later. So there you go. Those are the doors. Now what I'm going to do is switch to the wall tile and then walk around and do this. And just kind of enclose everything. And then I'll make this stone. Now what this is going to do for you is give you a little bit of protection while you're doing the rest of this. And it makes it a little bit easier to place those ceiling tiles. Because the more things you have in your sockets, the more those tiles want to stick to things. And it makes it... It's tough. And when you're under fire on an official server, it, it's a thing. Let me go ahead and pull back one more time. Left-hand side of the player, main entrance, right side, main entrance, and then I guess auxiliary would be down to the left, right? That would be southwest. Oops. Okay. Now what you want to do is place these doors on quickly. Have them swing out. Lock it. You would probably use a keypad if you're not solo. Let's be honest, you would, and then lock this bad boy, have it swing out, lock it. Now you're kind of protected. We are in the cementing phase. Again, left-hand side, right-hand side, auxiliary, and then that's the lighthouse. So what you want to do is get your building plans out. Place that soft side facing you. Go ahead and upgrade it. And now what you want to do is get to your tool cupboard itself. Right here. And then rotate until you see the knobs with details, because you want the knobs facing you. And then walk it back into that triangle. Oop, 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 oop. And then authorize, and then lock immediately. You don't really have to put your materials in right away. I'm going to pull back one more time so you can see this. It's important that when you have your tool cupboard, then you can destroy those thatch tiles, those uh, whatever they're called. The thatch, I think thatch is arc, but you know what I mean. Twig. You can destroy those if you're in the cementing phase. So I'm going to hold the hammer, destroy. Now, facing the tool cupboard, this is important. Now that I have my furnace, uh, you can see that it kind of elevates and comes up and down. Uh, to keep it totally flat, sometimes you need to like pull the thumbstick down and then walk back. Now, this will be dangerous if you've got an extra player with you, uh, a team member, have them protect you. Because um, you want this as low as possible, and there is a certain position for this. So. Uh, facing the tool cupboard, you want to have your furnace out all the way low to the ground. You want your left and right to be s as centered as you can make it, right, in this square, the 2x2 two two square. And then once you have that, you want to walk it back to the wall until it sticks or turns red. If it sticks, that's good. If it turns red, just walk it back towards you a little bit. I like to stick it to the back wall and then do just a little bit of movement towards me where the actual furnace moves, right? So it pulls it off the wall so it's not eating it. But you want to have even left and right, and you want a nice gap between this triangle and this first front knob. I'm going to go ahead and break away the camera before I place this. Another reason why we do this on PC. I'm going to try to be slow with it. You can see we've got a good space here where this rock is for us to walk through. And it's not completely eating the back here. We can still place things. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my character, reattach to my dome piece, 
boop, and then place this bad boy. Important. Now, let me close this door so we don't get capped. And let's walk around this thing. There's the tool cupboard. The reason for this is because you're going to be navigating around this a lot, and if you choose the more uh, thick option with more storage, um, this gap right here is going to be really important for you to navigate because you're going to be going from shingle like this and then kind of walking around and then scooping under. Anyways, okay. i got to make this quick because the last one was like 40 minutes. This is like take number 1 million. Okay, so what you want to do now is there's a tool covered here. Uh, you're going to place a wall frame here. You're going to place another wall frame. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scratch that. Go ahead and delete this. I almost forgot the most important step on why we did this. My bad, my bad. Go to your triangle roof tile right here, not to be confused with the roof tile. And you're only going to place triangle roof tiles. Bear with me. So the reason why we didn't do the wall stuff first, to see it, when you place this, it makes it much easier. Now, with these procedural corners, it's going to make this autocomplete. Oops, see, it's so fickle even with this. And it's even worse on console, i got to tell you. So look, when I place that corner, that procedural roof tile completes this, and it makes it so it a sky tile, uh, essentially a floor grill, but way tougher. And we're able to run a furnace inside legit, like a pixel-wide gap to the sky enables this to work. And then triangles, right? And then triangle here, you see that completing triangle. And then back here, triangle. Again, this is the auxiliary door. And then triangle here, completes, almost done. Triangle, roof tile. And then look, it completely shuts off the top. Now, if they're all of the same material, they will complete. If you break them away, let me go ahead and detach. If you break them away like this, like different materials, it won't complete the procedural corner. So if you're upgrading, make sure you have enough to go all the way around or you're gonna have these massive gaps. So just keep that in mind. Okay, reattach, boop. Now what we're going to do on the inside, because it's much easier this way, I'm trying to be quick about this. I'm going to jump and upgrade. Let's just do stone to start. And then we'll go fill in the doorways and airlocks. And I'll show you some improvements you can make and some variations you can make off these back corners. I'll do the lesser version first, and then we'll do the filled in version. Um, it just, I don't know, it makes more sense that way. So you've got some options. Again, always apply your own touch to it. Uh, like I said earlier, you can attach a boathouse like to this frame here and have it go outward if you want to. Uh, the sky's the limit. This formation has to be the same with these roof tiles for this to be complete. If it doesn't have floor grills or this pattern with uh, procedural triangle roof tiles, this will not work. And I, I will show you just to make sure it's always good to test this. Because now's the time to demolish, right? And this works outside just to show you this is the thing. Boom. Functional. Okay, so back here by the tool cupboard, you can see it right there. We have the hard wall here. That's perfect. We're going to place a wall frame for real this time, and then a wall frame. Now we're going to take a floor triangle, place, place, and let's upgrade these to stone. This keeps, this makes an airlock. Oh my goodness. What a wasteful person. By the way, we are streaming this constantly over on Rust Console Edition. So if uh, you're watching this now, we're probably live streaming, or we just did one recently. So swing by and be like, what's up, scrub? And I'll be like, what'd you say to me? Say hi. Say what's up. So I'm going to place a lock here. And then this here. I like having these wall frames because when this does get really snug, um, jumping from here to the shingle is going to be a thing. And, of course, if it's clutch jumping, I can't do it. Anyways, we stand right here. This is the big rock gap here, and you can see the tool cupboard in the back. We almost have that side complete. Now. You don't have to have the reinforced glass. This guy right here is called strength and glass here. Um, but it does help. And if you don't want to mess with that, you can make this a wall frame and just put a garage door on here if you want to. But don't forget to put a lid. Where's my hammer? Upgrade it to stone. I like to put the window, so that's what I'm going to put. I put this here even if I don't have that window, and then I fill it in when I do. By the way, hard side out. Because let's be honest, if they're inside here, they've got the tool cupboard and you've got bigger problems. And then uh, let's say we were miraculous and got this blueprint. We're good to go. Now we're going to do the other airlock with a little specialty piece here. Again, um, tool cupboard door, other main door, and then this is auxiliary door. So we're going to place a tile here, soft side towards me. If we step in on this side. This is going to show us the hard side. In case somebody breaks in, we're going to put triangle tiles here and here. Wall frames here, and then upgrade these to stone. 
so good for satellite bases. You'd be surprised how much more work you can get done like this. Because you literally fast travel by wrecking your character and, and spawning here, farm it up, let it process, fast travel back, come back an hour later, and then move it. Okay. These are the main doors. They're good. They've got little caps on top. We've got the two garage doors. And if you can't afford them, that's fine. Just work with this, you know? So you're good. Now, let's add some other stuff. Now, if you have the locker blueprint and it can be grabbed or purchased just straight up at the bandit camp, you're going to place... There's the tool cupboard. You're going to place the locker here, plumb against the wall, get a bed BP or a sleeping bag. Beds are better because there's slower or faster respawn times. Place it diagonally up against the locker. Get a large... What is this? Wooden box. I was going to say storage chest. Jeez. Am I stroking out? We place a box here, and then if you kind of dangle dip right there, bingo. Doesn't really matter that it's hanging over because this is all for storage. Processing. Now over here, I like to do this because let's be honest, believe it or not, charcoal later on, that's a big deal. So I like to take these small furnaces, place them in the corner very tightly. And again, if this is too high, this foundation, or this is too tight, you can just leave this as a wall frame we're just completely open. Again, I like nice and secure. I want people to have to pay to get into my base no matter what. So you can put that there. And as long as you can reach these with ease, it's good. And if you put a cap on, now you got workable honeycomb. Functional honeycomb. I'm going to try to jump up here and not use my admin powers. And get this good. Boom. So, over here this can go two ways. You could be done here. Like, totally. But we're going to add more protection above the airlocks, and then we're going to add a specialty spot here. So let me show you how this flushes out with the normal version. You can place two sleeping bags here, or if you don't have teammates, you can just put more storage. And then, if you're not going to use this as the uh, beefier side, the more advanced side, you can take this door off and place this here, and it is your best friend. You can sell things out of here. Is it not going to snap because I put a bag right there? Of course not. There we go. Make sure you turn off the broadcast. Admin scoop. Then you can either use this for storage or you can sell things out of here. Um, it's just nice vertical storage and it makes this uh, doorway that was once weak super strong. Uh, you could do that just like this. Or what I like to do is I use this as a doorway but also storage. Again, completely optional. This is going to make your walkway much tighter here. And I'm just going to show you one of the walkways you have to do here. Shingle, walk around, and then drop. And then you'd have to jump to the shingle, walk around, and then drop. Because jumping between these over here ain't going to happen when there's a wall there. And you don't want to get stuck. Okay, real quick. I'm going to place a wall Whoops, right here. And believe it or not, it's going to be hard side facing you because this is going to be workable honeycomb. Now we're going to go to a half wall. Triangle floor. Whoops, triangle floor. And then hammer, destroy this. Stone and stone. We're going to do a large box here. Buckle inwards. I said it'd be to my right. Buckle, rotate. Boom, smack against the wall. Nice and snug. We're going to make a quad storage and two triangles. What's up? Get it up against the wall. And then double rotate. Boom. Now we can place ceiling tiles. Whoops. Oh, right here. Whoopsie. I should say triangle floor tiles. Oh, my time is on this. But the last couple of takes I did were like 30 minutes. The other one was like 40 minutes. So I'm hoping this is faster. So right there. You've got this. And what you can do is stick a wall frame here. Or you can get really heady. And you can do this. You can stick one of these window frames in. Again, soft side towards you. Because, again, this is acting as honeycomb. And then if you have vertical embrasures, this is going to get wacky. Place it on the interior. You can still access all the boxes. And then place a window inside. Oh, my goodness, what's going on? Then you can even do this. Let's say you don't have this yet and you still have an active doorway. Let's see what I mean? This is very customizable. Hopefully this isn't confusing. Let me know down in the comments if I'm off the freaking rails, off the reservation. I like to stick a little tiny door frame. You can stick a wall frame in here if you want. A bigger door, double doors, uh, garage door, whatever. 
Uh, regular doorway. Have it open inward because you've got the single pass through airlock just like this. I like to do stuff like this, and then when I obviously have smelted enough, whoops, let's get rid of this. That's a, um, this extra. What's that supposed to be there? That way this is functional. It's really hard for somebody to door camp you because you have three entrances. Right? And then a lot of times I'll switch this over to a vending machine when I add the extensions out here. I'll show you that in a second. That would be these guys right here. Extra airlocks and some protection. And then I usually rope this off. Look at that. Furnace is still going. You could literally be furnacing right now. Okay, so I'm going to add extra storage and then extra protection over the main airlocks. There's TC airlock and then other main airlock and there's auxiliary. Again, same thing that we did back here. We can do up here if you want to. Just make sure you can reach these because if you can't, destroy this wall and just make it a wall frame and make it a garage door. Uh, it's just going to make your life easier. And where's the embrasures? I like vertical embrasures. It gives you more access across the board. I like to stick it on the interior. Come on. Usually if you go left or right, they'll snap either in or out. That way, when you sign off, you would have these all plugged up like this, and it makes it very fortified. And let's say we are going to get rich. Yeah, we'll do this in order. We'll back it up, right? Now, let's do the extra storage, and then we'll do the extra protection. So, above your spawn point here, you can do three triangles. Sorry, i got to move it like this because we have super stacks stone leave this wide open uh, jump up here then go right to the corner make sure your buckles facing you parallel till it's blue that's good rotate over here push it against this triangle frame boom I'm gonna step back to the oops furnace shingle there's my tool cover now switch to a small box you can either have it this direction or you can rotate it and have it go lengthways. That way you can be up on the shingle and that's more space. You know, charcoal. You always need space when you're producing, manufacturing, right? When you're in high production, whether you're solo, duo, trio, it doesn't matter. Here is more storage. And I hope this isn't longer than my last five takes. You can stick a small box here. See how much more storage you have? We turn this into more storage and protection. And look, we're going to add an extra airlock so this will be gone. Let's say we're rich now because we've been running this operation for a minute. Now we can either sell things out of here. I think i got to do outside. Or you can just turn it into storage. If you don't want to use it as a shop, easy, dude. Just turn off that broadcast and you're good to go. And look, now you have a little storage room and it's active honeycomb. Hold the action. Disable. Boom. Good. You see what I mean by this gap here? you got to walk here, jump, tile hug the edge, and then go to the other side. It's tight, but hey, it works. Now, if you really wanted extra storage, you could use the top of the caps here, but look at this. These are the main entrances, and it causes a security risk. If you knock this out, you're in the base. Let's say you raid one door, four satchels. Let's say these are closed. If you soft side this, four satchels and soft side, boom, 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 you're in the base, right? That's not good. And let's say we're frugal with our bucks. So let's make this more doable. Hey, you know what? Before we do this, real quick, let me just show you what the upkeep cost is right now. Just with this config. Uh, with this config. 1,422 stone. Easy. 276 fragments cooked. Easy because you got a giant fur furnace off to your right. Taking a swig of the tactical cylinder. Ridiculous. Okay, that's the upkeep now. Here's with the extra protection. Oops. Ascopy. Okay, let's get, on, uh, let's get on top of the furnace. Now, since this is a security risk here, obviously our TC's here, what we want to do is create a space that if they soft side up from this tile, that they end up with a bunch of hard sides and nowhere to go. So you see how the X is here, so our soft side is here. Right, just like this. Let me use my admin just to speed this up. And then... So what it's going to do inside here, I guess it's probably just best that we do it like this. Look, if they come in here, four satchel this and soft side this, look at that, hard side, hard side. And if this is, works correctly, and you should check this, we have a full-size wall piece here, but you notice it's perfectly cut into a triangle. 
and that's because the procedural rooftop has cut that off. Now, when you place these, it's very important that when you place them quickly, come outside, and if they're hanging out, that means you can't do the cap here, and that's fine. Just demolish the wall before the cementing phase ends and just make these ceiling, ceiling tiles metal, and that's about as good as you can go, right? Just in case there's a glitch, we had one earlier during the phase, or the testing branch, so I just want to, you know, future-proof this. And again, you got options, you know, change it up, use this core idea, add it onto your base, put it in your compound. See, this jump is hard. I'm the worst at this. And again, when Builder's Paradise does come out, I would strongly recommend making this and navigating through here and just see what it feels like. And then, if you want to be extra secure, by the way, back to the build. We have another hard side. And then each tile here, if they soft side up, they're going to be met with more resistance. Right? Who wants that? Absolutely nobody. So they got to keep paying money to get in. And that's what you want. Uh, delicious. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Oh, I'm going to use my admin to jump up because that's going to take forever because I'm bad at jumping. Same thing here. Here's the main door. Right? Oops. So what you want to do is the wall here. I like to crouch, make a full wall, soft side facing you. Upgrade, walk it around. Oh, well, this would actually be here already. And make another wall, soft side facing you. Let's go outside and double check to make sure this isn't hanging off the roof tile. Because sometimes if there's things close to it, it will auto-complete to it or, or it will procedurally connect to it and it just makes it unusable because you don't want to uh, soft side, hard side wall hanging out where anybody can just get to either side because then they'll destroy something in here. It's not going to be the end of the world, it's just, it's just clean. Keep it that way. Watch, we're going to do one more thing here, then we're going to be protected. We're going to add our little airlock. I'll show you the upkeep for this, and then we'll add the airlock, which is going to be so minuscule. Look at that, boom! Super protected, right? Look at this. Ridiculous. Ridiculously awesome. Look at this upkeep. 1,701. What? In 281, you got a beefier boy. You're good to go. Let's add these airlocks. All right, so obviously our auxiliary door has been plugged. This is nice because you can stick turrets on top. And I strongly recommend keeping these. I guess you could do armored doors, but nothing says rob me quite like armored doors showing on the outside. But, you know, you do you. Play it the way you see fit. Rust can be played a kajillion different ways. We're going to have our lovely doors here. Again, always opening into the triangle. And always look left and right. And I click cap here and then make sure that it creates this single pass through. Beautiful. It gives more ways to leave your base. And it stops people from door camping you. Or not stop, but it gives you more options. And if you are so lucky... And Power Surge isn't out yet, although you can do this with Power Surge. Um, if turrets don't cost you power is what I'm saying. You can place a turret here. Just know that placing walls here will create that autocomplete I was talking about. And that's no good. So these are going to be free ball and turrets, okay? It's okay. If you got to sign out and you're worried about them, just pick them up. Take them put them back inside. These are to help you kind of move in and out. Because let's be honest, if this is covering you and someone attacks you, stay within the kill cone of this, uh, I was going to say camera, but turret. And then you're basically safe, or your loot's safe. If you die, anybody that tries to come and pick this bag up is going to get annihilated by this. It, if it has both bullets and power. But right now, as of November 2021, it currently does not require power. Again, these are 100% optional. I don't know why I'm opening and closing these. I'm just going to fly out and do the other side here. So yeah, we got a lot of uh, live streams happening around this stuff constantly. We're always in there unofficial. Sometimes we're doing some community events. Uh, when our community servers do come online for Rust Console Edition, we will be hosting our own uh, events and also like a slightly tweaked vanilla version. But well, again, when we have info, we'll let you know. But something to be excited about. You've seen us already do some community events on official servers. We did the Giant Zerg for the whole month of November. That's crazy. It was a blast. We took over an entire island. It was beautiful. Also uh, made some videos of the raids we did. Rock Raid for Life. What? And boom. Look at this. You've got an extra layer here. More honeycomb. More ways to leave your base. You've got a turret on top as an optional piece. 
And then if you want to be really gangster, right? Like super freaking just loaded beyond juiced out of your mind. Look at this. You can make it metal. Easy. Just keep in mind that when you do the upgrades, it's going to create a gap. I'm just going to show you the roof over here. But obviously, if you're going to do the roof, you want to make sure this is all metal. But let's say we just scaffold up here. I'm using my admin powers because I want to make this brief or as quickly as possible, not brief. As we upgrade this, you see what I mean? It breaks it. It doesn't break it, but it just, it all needs to be metal for it to be complete. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, that's probably super confusing. Just like this, more metal. Yeah, you'll probably want to do it on your roof after you have all these upgrades because this gets pretty nutty. But look, it completes easily. And if you're really big balling, I mean, shoot, dude. Turn this into armored. You won't. Let me fly up here again. Sorry, I keep sliding off. Did I tell you I'm bad at jumping? It's true. I always like to kind of do these little gaps first, and then you can fill in the rest. Oh, it's so beautiful. See, this little pixel gap is your best friend. We'll load these up and you're good to go. If you found this useful and helpful, be sure to drop a like on the video. It helps out tremendously. And if you're into it, especially Rust Console Edition or anything open world survival as we do jump around, we do main Rust Console on the console version, obviously. But if you're into it, consider dropping that subscribe and turning on that notification bell to all. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next live stream slash video. This is the Jade Furnace Base. May it do you well. And let me know down in the comments how this is going for you guys. And any improvements or just even some of the tweaks that you guys have been doing. I'm always interested to see what you guys are actively doing on the official servers. So there you go. Love you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's amazing. You can schmelt and protect at the same time.